when Jesus was on earth, the devil was in heaven. Jesus came back to life. It was now time for his ascension. He ascended to that particular gate that was locked against Adam and Eve. He got there. What was his plan? To go and get rid of the serpent. The serpent couldn't go. The serpent was there in heaven, coming for every meeting. Yes, he was, he was attending meetings. The serpent didn't leave, leave that garden. He was attending meetings, upon meetings. In fact, there was a particular meeting. He came late. He came late to that meeting. And God asked him, how come you're coming now? He said, I'm moving to and fro. <laughs> I'm moving to and fro. Then God said, if I was God, I would say, get out from here. But he didn't say that. He now asked him, have you considered my servant Job? And then he had, he, has a, he had something to say. And then, you know how Job suffered. God said, touch everything. But upon him, which is his soul, don't touch. So that was why Job lost his investment, lost everything. You, you can see. Now, if you read Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again, it says, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world the great the bible called him the bible called him the great dragon he said he was cast out that old serpent that old serpent that old serpent you take note of that you see that old serpent was the one who deceived adam and eve but he was cast into the earth and then they said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down. You see? Then if you read in verse 13, it says, when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman that gave birth to the man child. He, he persecuted. He said, wait, how come I was defeated? Who, who even gave birth to this woman? Who even gave birth to this man? I think it's a woman. And then the Bible says, he persecuted the woman that gave birth to the man-child. And then the last verse, it says, and the dragon was angry with the woman. That's Revelation 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of the seed of the woman, which keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. When Adam and Eve was cast out of the garden, have you ever asked yourself, why was the serpent not cast out? It's a question that by this time you're supposed to be asking yourself, how come Adam was cast out, he was driven out of the garden, Eve was driven away from the garden, you know, but to the serpent was just cursed, but he remained in the garden. You know why? I'll tell you. You know, he has taken the Adamic authority, and many years later, God began to think, how will I get man back to this garden? God was troubled. How will I return man? Because even God himself does not joke with the constitution. He does not joke with the constitution. The constitution has said, without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission for sin. So Adam and his wife has committed sin. And the cherubim chased them out. And then God began to think, what am I going to do? All of a sudden, he, years passed. He said, okay, man, if you pay your tithe, I'll open to you the windows. Of course, you know if there are windows, there are doors. So man began to pay tight and receiving the blessing that come from the window. He would have just said, pay your tight and I'll open to you the doors in Malachi 3. He said, pay your tight and I'll open to you the windows. So men began to pay tight, but tight was not the reason why those windows were open. God was looking for a connection between man and himself. So this main plan was to open the gate for man to return back into that garden. Now something happened. He tried to use uh, he tried to use Abraham by sacrificing Isaac. He said to Abraham to tell he told Abraham take Isaac to Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is three days journey. Why three? He told him, and of course you know the story. At the mind of justice, God saw that if Isaac died, he would die for nothing. So he told Abraham, don't lay your hands on that boy. He didn't. He wasn't testing Abraham. He wanted Isaac to die, but he saw that Isaac would have died for nothing because Isaac came through the seed of a man. He quickly declared Abraham righteous and then wanted Isaac to die, but it wasn't going to work. The same thing he tried Noah. Noah also didn't work, but then the big one, he sent Jesus to come and die. When Jesus came in and died, three things came out of his body. Of course, you know, the spirit came out of his body, the water came out of his body, and then the blood came out of his body. 
which we are the witnesses that Jesus have dealt with forces behind the scene, those forces that locked the gates. And then when Jesus was arrested from the cross and was taken to hell, he was in hell. It was in hell he released Abraham. Because when Abraham died, he, he, he wasn't taken back to that garden. Because when Adam, they drove away Adam, Adam's children were outside. All the descendants of Adam was outside. No one returned back to that garden. So no one was taken to that garden. So everyone was locked in their various cells in hell. Some call it Hades, uh, but uh, some call it Abraham's bosom. All right? They were all in their various cells until Jesus came spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them in hell, and collected the keys of hell and of death. What did he do with those keys? He used those keys to open those prophets who died before his arrival. He opened Abraham, he opened Jacob, he opened David, he opened all of them, and they all came out physically, and people saw them. Now, it was now time Jesus got to that gate. When he got to the gate, he shouted on that gate, lift up your head, all ye gates, and be you lifted up, you everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. And the principalities that locked the gate against Adam and Eve, ask him, who is that king of glory? So he had to be outside. They were asking him, who is that king of glory? Because since Adam left, nobody has ever passed through that gate. Who is that king of glory? So Jesus had to introduce himself. He said, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle, he is the king of glory. And guess what? They opened the gate for him and he came in. When he came in, he saw the serpent that was not chased out. He saw them. So in Revelation chapter 12 from verse 7, he says, and there was one in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angel but in verse 8, he said, he prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more for him. Everywhere became hot. Then in verse 9, he says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. You see? So Michael and his angel fought with this dragon and the dragon also fought with them. And they forced him out pushed him out of that garden into the earth. Then verse 11 said, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Take note, did you see how they overcame him? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. When, they got, when Jesus himself got there, they are, Jesus already have a name. His name has been exalted above everything. But they did not overcome him with the name. They overcame him by the blood. That suggests that when Jesus was going to that gate, ascending into that gate or into heaven, wherever that gate was, he went with his blood. No wonder when this woman wanted to touch, touch him, he said, don't touch me for I have not yet ascended unto my father. If you notice, when the priest of the Old Testament is going into the Holy of Holies to spill blood, nobody touches him. So Jesus had become our high priest. He was now going to present his blood. He took his blood from this earth to that gate that was that they chased Adam and Eve from. And he entered. And the Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Immediately, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12, the Bible says, Rejoice ye heaven, and they that dwell in it. Alright? So they started rejoicing. They started rejoicing. Alright? Then he says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you. So you see, you, this is the book of Revelation we are talking about here. When Jesus went to heaven, they cursed the inhabitant of the earth and of the sea. Who is the inhabitant of the earth and of the sea? Are you not the inhabitant of the earth and of the sea? Are you not the one they said woe unto in the book of Revelation? Maybe you don't know. Check it. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. Oh, oh, oh. I... I don't know whether you are getting it. The dragon in the book of Revelation, the dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And I, I showed you yesterday that uh, when you see the horn, it has to do with principalities. Now, the dragon with seven heads and ten horns was cast into this earth. After Je That is to tell you that when Jesus was on earth, the devil was in heaven. Yes, because if it says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17 that when the, when the dragon 
verse 17. It says, and the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of the seed of the woman. Are you not the remnant of the seed of the woman which keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ? So why do you think it's not going to fight you? This is something it says, and, and I heard a loud voice and says, now it's come salvation and strength. Meaning, when Jesus was on earth, there was no strength in heaven. When Jesus was on earth, there was no salvation in heaven. It said, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. It said, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them day and night. So he was cast down. Now, it says, the dragon was wrought with the woman. Read it for yourself. Revelation 12 and verse 17. Yesterday when I was doing a video, they said I was talking about the Old Testament. Ladies and gentlemen, I can give you a thousand scriptures. I am not a preparing man for this. I'm a prepared man. I've been prepared for the last 22 years to deal with principality. Principality has fought us. He has done everything. But this knowledge, one thing I will do before god takes me in this world i will reveal the true picture of principalities i will reveal the knowledge for the whole world to come to know what is behind the forces behind the scene he says and the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed are we not the remnant of the seed of the woman which keep which keep the commandment of god and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is us. That is born again Christian. So whenever you commit an offense against the commandment, this is the principality that attacks you. He came to make war with you. He came to make war. After they cast him down from heaven, he came to make war with you. So now, by this verse of scripture, you can literally tell where the Garden of Eden is. God did not create man to live on earth. It was a fall of man that brought man into the earth. Because where that serpent was at that time, was, wherever that serpent was at the time he was cast out, that was where Adam was supposed to be. So ladies and gentlemen, if you commit any offense against the scripture, principality will attack your flesh. Let nobody deceive you. Whatever thing, even if they, when they talk about the place of mercy, mercy is not to your flesh mercy is to your soul forgiveness is not to your flesh forgiveness is to your soul so if you commit a crime against the scripture it will be difficult for even god almighty to help you it will be difficult for them to help you so what am i trying to tell you stay away from those things the scripture said not to do because no principality can touch you except you have gone against the scripture if you do not go against the scripture principality will not touch you but if you go against the scripture they will arrest you they will deal with you the bible talked about the lawful captive they will arrest you and punish you punish the flesh that is what they will do and they will do it legally they will take permission from god to do it because God has set up the system, kept the constitution for every man to obey. So, if you go against it, the people who, the law enforcement agencies of the scripture will come after you. And they are the principalities. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is God's Will Abbey. And I am your principality specialist. God bless you. Bye-bye.